making the most of the dash. Lord, we ask you to put me on as your microphone. Open up our ears to the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. So when you're all said and done, you get a, say you get a tombstone, okay? And on your tombstone, for most people, it's going to have the year you were born, the year you entered eternity, and in between is a dash. Your entire life fits in that dash. And hopefully, for all of you, that is the equivalent of 120 years, okay? Love it to get to 120, amen. Now, statistically, for most of us, may not happen. But I'd rather aim high and miss it by a little bit than accept the lowest common denominator. Amen. So let's push for a long, healthy life. Moses was 120. His eyes were not dim. And on the day he died, he was still climbing mountains. I want to be like Moses. 80, or 80 was Caleb, or Caleb was 80, however you want to say that. Caleb was 80. He said, man, I feel like I'm 40. Let's go take our enemy out. Let's, I'm up for this. But bottom line, if you live to be 120 or 80, the Bible says this life is but a vapor. It goes by very quickly. And there are some precious people that are in here that have lived more life than the rest of us that have got some more gray hair. And they will tell you, especially our young people, how quickly we go from young to gray hair. It goes quickly. It is a vapor, the Bible says. So we're talking about making the most of that dash, how to most effectively live your life. And our key scripture for this whole series is Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Uh, the NIV says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And when you break that down, we look at walk circumspectly. In other words, walk Halfway, walk smart, walk uprightly, walk righteously. And then it says, live as wise, not as fools. We've talked about the difference between wise and foolish living. We did a message during this series, and this is part five, on the house built on the rock versus the house built on the sand. We've talked about redeeming the time. Uh, We haven't got into too much yet. The days are evil, but I don't think I have to convince you that the days are evil. And then understanding the will of God. And uh, we, we haven't got into that yet. We're still working on living wise. And the last two weeks, I mean, I, I just had so much fun with this series. Um, we talked about the book of Proverbs, which is the book of wisdom. Okay? And, and as a matter of fact, Proverbs was written mostly by King Solomon, who was noted as the wisest man to ever live and the earth, and King Solomon was giving instruction to his children, his sons, on how to live. So this is the book of wisdom. Uh, 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 Proverbs and Ecclesiastes are the two books uh, predominantly of wisdom in the Bible. It's important that you note in Ecclesiastes that Solomon wrote that at the end of his life when he was backslidden. Okay, Solomon had run after everything but God. And and so when you read things like everything is vanity, it's all chasing for the wind, you have to realize Solomon was in a fallen state. Now he he gets it right by the end of the book, but there's so much wisdom in there, but you have to understand there's parts of what he was saying, he was not right with God. Does that make sense? See, God is so awesome. He doesn't just tell about all the good things people do. He lets us learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah, so that's, that's, so that's the book of Proverbs was written. And, and sometimes people say, well, how is it, you know, is, 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 the, is the faith, is, is Christianity for young people? Can young people understand the faith, understand preaching, yes. I mean, the Bible is very, very much young person friendly. Uh, Timothy was a young pastor. Uh, then you had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, who were young men, who were given great authority at a young age. 
uh, uh, God is into young people, and then you don't have to be young to get it. You can be old and get it. Amen. But that's the book of Proverbs. And we begin to stack Proverbs on top of each other like we're going to do again tonight. And we found out that being a wise communicator, learning how to effectively, and I'm not just talking about public speaking, but learning how to communicate with other people is a difference between success and failure in life. And, we begin, and we're going to review that in a little bit. But, but just when you begin to lay all the benefits out of being a wise communicator, and then you lay out all the consequences of being an unwise communicator, it is night and day the type of life that those people live. And then last week, we looked at receiving correction. We did the same thing. We laid out all these scriptures on receiving correction. And the Bible makes it very clear that receiving correction, that if you do it well, that it's going to cause your life to prosper, to be promoted, to be healthy, to be wise. And if you reject correction, it's going to cause your life to suffer greatly, that, that the, the, the consequences of not being willing to submit to correction are huge and we put all those on top of each other, okay? If you've ever had somebody correct you, now there's wrong ways and right ways to correct people, and we, we talked about that last week, if you have to bring correction into somebody. But if you've ever had somebody correct you, it's, hopefully it's because they love you. And if you've even had a boss that corrected you, you know, there's a lot of people that if your boss corrects you, they get really upset. They hate their boss. How dare they say I was wrong? Blah, 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 blah. Well, listen, your boss is just as uncomfortable giving correction as anybody else, okay? But they're try if they're trying to bring that to you, there's a good chance they're seeing something that you're not seeing, and they're your boss, and instead of rejecting that and getting defensive and trying, trying to, you know, maybe uh, have a bad opinion of your boss, maybe you ought to say, well, maybe I'm going to put those corrections and what they've told me, I'm going to put that into practice and see what happens. And of course, if, the, if correction ever comes in a way that would ask you to do anything illegal, unethical, or immoral, then of course you should reject that correction, okay? But... Correction is a wonderful thing when applied the right way. And we ought to be seeking out correction. And we did all the, we did list all those scriptures and the benefits and the consequences of rejecting it. And it was just amazing. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So, Proverbs deals with every area of life, business, family, health, your relationship with God. So that being said, if you have a yellow piece of paper, come on up here and bring your Bible with you. It's time to put on your preaching voice. And, and, and uh, give us your best proverb here. So they're numbered one through 10. So Katina will be first, Zach will be last, and just kind of line yourselves up and pass the microphone here. So you have these scriptures in your notes, and I thought this would just be an interesting way, and I may interrupt you if I get excited. So, all right. Proverbs chapter two, verse one through six, Katina. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden, as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom for his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Amen. So wisdom and knowledge and understanding is from God. Thank you. Jen? Happy is the man who finds wisdom. and the man Stop. Who... All right. Proverbs, let me give the verse. I'm sorry. Proverbs <laughs> chapter 3, verse 13 through 18. All right. I know you're nervous. You don't like to be in front of people, do you? I forgot about that. No. Too bad. So sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, her gain, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. The length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are of pleasantness, and all of her paths are peace, and she is, she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. 
Amen. So look at the words that it's describing that go with wisdom. Isn't that amazing? Tree of life, happy. Uh, all right. Next, Juanita, we've got what? Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 through 9. Is that what you got? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Don't forsake her, for she will preserve you. Oh, Lord, I messed up. Hang on. You're right. No, oh. I'm, I'm on three instead of four now. Okay. Okay, let's get this back up here. I need that. I need four. Okay. Okay, let's see. Four. I got to go to five. I got five. I got six. Okay, there we go. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom to the prince. To, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And all in your getting, get understanding. Exalt her. She will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place, she will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver you. Amen. That's awesome. Okay, Felicia. What do you got here, Felicia? You got uh, chapter 8, verse 1 through 11. Yeah. You got the toughest assignment here, Felicia. 11 verses. Can you do this? Do you want to? No, I want you to do it. <laughs> 11 verses. You yes. know what I tell the praise team before they get up? You know what I tell the praise team before they sing? Yeah. Don't mess up. <laughs> does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights along the way... Where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gates leading into the city at the entrances, she calls aloud. To you, O men, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, gain understanding. Listen, for I have worthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. For my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are faultless to those who have knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Amen. Did you see how it says wisdom's lips are not perverse? They're not uttering bad things. You know, when, when, when people use their mouth for, for negative things, it, it, it's almost like slapping wisdom in, in the face. And, and I love how it's, it's giving wisdom a, 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 a persona. It's calling it a person. You see, wis, the, the, one of the spirits of God is the spirit of wisdom. See, and, and it, it, it's identifying as wisdom here as, as almost like it's an entity, you see. And, and, and I mean, this length of days is in her right hand. Wow. I love this. All right, next. Get Becky, what you got here? You got uh, chapter 8, 17 through 21? Yeah. All right. I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold, yet... What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full. Amen. All right, Kelsey, you have verses 32 through 36. Okay. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Man, I mean, that, ver that, that passage right there, we could just sit there. I mean, those who fi find us find wisdom. I mean, we love the Lord, but those who hate wisdom love death. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Zach, what you got? You got uh, Proverbs 9, 10 through 12? Yeah. Okay. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Mm -hmm. For by me, your days will be multiplied, and years of your life will be added to you. And, and you are wise, you are wise for yourself, and if you scoff, you will bear it alone. Amen. Thank you. Val? You got 16-16? Uh, 16-6. 16-6. Six. 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 Okay. 
By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. All right. And I am double-checked that I may have given you the wrong scripture. Give me Proverbs 16. Would you give me Proverbs 16, 16 back up there? I'll look up. Uh, yeah. How, how much better to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver? See, I, I can't write very well. I'm sorry, Val. We talked That's about. All right. Mary looked, she got it up for me. Okay. <laughs> I left my Bible at home. That's all right. Thank you. All right. Uh, we got Proverbs 19, 8. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good. Amen. And lastly, Zach 24, 3 and 4. Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Amen. Let's give these guys a hand. Thank you all. Appreciate you. You can keep those yellow pieces of paper as your monumento of your preaching assignment. The first, some of you, the first time of many that you're going to preach. All right. Now, we shotgun those scriptures at you, okay? I was trying to take a drink from a fire hydrant. But let's put them together. Let, 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 let's start pulling out the blessing side versus the non-blessing side, okay? So when you take everything we just read and stack it on itself, the benefits of seeking wisdom, here they go. Wisdom will preserve you. Wisdom will keep you. Wisdom will promote you. Wisdom will bring you honor. Wisdom will put on your head an ornament of grace. Wisdom will be a crown of glory to you. Wisdom will cause you to understand the fear of the Lord. Wisdom will cause you to find the knowledge of God. Wisdom is better than rubies. All the things that you can desire are not as good as wisdom. Now, I know sometimes in religion we say, well, don't desire anything. No, that's Buddha. Okay, we're not Buddha, okay? You can desire things as a Christian, all right? You know, we were talking, we were making Thanksgiving plans today, and, and my mom was talking about the pies she wants to make, and, and I became very desirous, okay? <laughs> you know, and, and I got the, but we can desire things, we just can't allow those things to take the place of God. But here it, it, it's telling us that, he, that wisdom, and, and, and right now some of you are into deer season, you desire a deer. Some of you are fishing, you desire a fish. Some of you ladies, you know, maybe you desire a, a new pair of shoes, that type of thing, whatever it might be. But what wisdom has to give you is better than the things on this earth we desire. And, and, and look, man, that doesn't mean the things on earth are bad, all right? My wife, my wife loves shoes, okay? And when I say love, I don't mean like, you know, in, in a wrong way, but, you know, one of the things I like to do with Andrea is, is we take a date. We usually end up in Greenwood, and, and just we, I take her, and, and I always argue with her because she doesn't like to spend money on herself, and I'm like, no, we're going to buy you something today. And and one of the things she likes is shoes. And I don't, I don't understand, but she does. She likes shoes, you know. And, and, and so, but, and, and she gets so thrilled. And she's, oh, are these little cute, shoes cute? And, and I try to, to embrace the cuteness of the shoes. I really do. I'm trying. I'm a better man than I used to be. Okay. But to me, a pair of sandals is a pair of sandals. All right. But to her... They're different. Okay. Now, if we go to the fishing aisle and I see me, you know, a number six for Paula in green, I'm desiring that number six because those are hard to come by. Okay. One called the ghost. You know what I'm talking about, Ryan? The old Paula called ghost. That's a good color. All right. I desire that. But Andrea's looking at me like, honey, this is the most goofy, dumb thing in the entire world, you know. 
So, <laughs> but all that stuff, wisdom is better. Uh, it says happy is the person with wisdom. I, I mean, the most prescribed medicine in our nation is antidepressants. And man, if I can find wisdom, it's going to contribute to my happiness in life. I don't know about you. I like being happy. I really do. I, mean, I know some of you don't like my jokes. I think my jokes are great. And, and you know, I meditate on, on jokes sometimes. I, I really do. I just, I just, I sit down and look up jokes and that time, even, even not just at that. Why? Well, laughter does good like a medicine. I mean, that's great for your soul. I love laughing. I love having a, I want to be a happy person, don't you? Um, I don't, I don't want to be driven by, by sadness and misery and, 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 you know, all that negative stuff. But man, when we find wisdom, the Bible says you're happy. I, 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 I mean, just, just the, the, the outlook on life is different when you're wise. Her proceeds are better than silver and gold. Now, how many of y'all enjoy money? All right, money's nice, okay? Uh, money's not our God. And, and Paul said, I know what it's like to be abased. I know what it's like to abound, and so do I. I know what it's like to be poor. I'm, I know what it's like to have, have, have your family have a car repossessed, have your house repossessed and all those things. I know what it's like to wear shoes that don't fit. I, I, I get all that. But I also know what it's like to, to eat a nice steak. And, uh, and when something goes wrong, we don't have to panic because there's a reserve. That's, that's, that's a good position to be. If the hot water heater goes out, it doesn't wreck your marriage. You, you know that? That's nice. Some, it's, for some of you, it took a lot of work to get to that point. Maybe some of you still getting there. But listen, there is hope. Yeah, there's hope. And, and wisdom will get you there. But her proceeds, as much as the things that money can buy, you know, the silver and gold of this word, the proceeds of wisdom are better. Well, the reason that wisdom is better than silver and gold is because when you have wisdom, you can get silver and gold. You know, I, I want to say something to those that are in business here. Uh, and, and this is something I'm telling most, most people recognize that there, there's a lot of people that are in business that are really struggling, and a lot of them sometimes don't have good integrity. But you know, the Bible says a good name is better than riches. Because if you have a good name, your good name will produce riches. But if you lose your integrity, you lose your reputation, you don't have the ability to get riches anymore. You know, I, I was doing the asphalt business, and, 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 and we did really well with the asphalt business, but not every job was a home run. Not every job we made money. We didn't make money on every job. You know, you, you do your bidding the best you can, um, and, and you, you, you think you've accounted for everything, and, and then, you know, maybe you get some bad weather. May, maybe uh, one thing that would happen in, in, in a parking lot, for instance, we did a big parking lot, many big parking lots, there's Sometimes there's water sitting underneath that parking lot that you don't know about. Uh, and, and there's a pressure system. And no sooner than you put that product down and it dries, and, or it's drying, and then it rains, and it pushes that water up, and uh, now you, you're losing money now. Uh, you just went from making money to losing money. And, uh, and, and you know, some people, I, I've seen the habit of some contractors, uh, and, and you guys uh, go back and ask for more money and that type of thing. Don't do that. If you give somebody a price, give them a price. You say, well, I'd lose money that way. Well, a good name is better than losing money. You know, and, and I've, I've had so many people do that to me, and I'm a pastor. And, you know, we struggle with this, and my staff will tell you, uh, um, because I'm a pastor, there, I, the last thing I want to do is nickel and dime somebody or, or be the person that causes somebody to hate God. So many times it's just easier for me to eat that money. I'll just eat it. I'll just like, okay, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going I'm to eat that and I'll deal with it, but I won't use you again. Uh, but but uh, I'm going to eat that because I can believe God to return that money to me. The last thing I want to do is be a jerk about it. And then, you know, maybe your faith isn't where you can lose money. And maybe you haven't built your business yet where you can lose money. But, but I'll just believe God to make it up to me because I want to have a good name. 
because a good name is better than riches. But if you're in business for yourself or if you're in any type of business where you have to give people prices, you better do your due diligence and bid the thing right. And if you're in this church and I hear you're out there changing bids after the fact, I'm going to have words with you. Amen. That's a jerk. That's, that's a bad reputation. And I don't put up with that garbage. Amen. Amen. And there's some of you that have done it. And you need to not do it. That makes sense? Because you, you don't have a good name, you see. You won't have a good name. And if you're associated with me, you better have a good name. Yeah, amen. amen. Does that make sense to everybody? I, make, I hope that makes sense. All right. And t- your name is everything. Your word is everything. Your name is important. And when people think of you, do they think of and of course, as I'm saying this, there, there's not a single, there's nobody in here. Don't, don't, oh man, that person did this, that person did I, I, I just know I've been a pastor long enough. I've seen it come and I've seen it go. And, and but I, I don't know why I got off on that today. There's hardly anybody in here this evening, today, tonight that's a, that's a contractor. I mean, so, but that's all those people watching online. All those Nigerian princes that are watching online. I'll tell you what. No, you're going to get to heaven and find out, man. You were praying for a blessing and it just never came. And God's going to be like, man, I sent you Nigerian princes that gave you emails every day offering to send you millions of dollars and you never clicked on the link. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. All right. We better get back into the word. Length of days. And wisdom is length of days. Your level of wisdom has something to do with how long you live. Riches and honor. You know, can, can, can I just, I always try to speak about this just a little bit when old brother Jesse comes in, because people get so tech. You know, Jesse, he's that prosperity guy, that type of thing. And, and look, man, I, I love Jesse. I love brother Jesse. I don't have to agree with everything somebody says to love them. Okay, all, all the ministers that come here, you, you can't get two pastors to agree on everything. That's imp- you don't even agree with your spouse on everything. And I'm sure many of you, you've changed your own mind a few times. So you don't even agree with yourself. <laughs> Think about that. I, 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 mean, I, mean, I mean, have you ever changed your mind on something spiritual? Or, I mean, Becky, have you, can you? Can anybody think of a time you did? I have. I've changed my mind. I can't even agree with me. So, so trying to get in perfect alignment with somebody before we can receive from them, you don't have, that, that's foolish. Okay? And, and people get so upset. Well, that whole prospect. Listen. Riches and honor are a product of wisdom. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Now, I'm a pastor. And I'm a pastor of a local church. And I smell like the sheep. And I, I, what's, what's good for Jesse is not necessarily good for me. You know, I, I, I don't want to do some of the things. I, this is not who I am. I know who I am. Amen. And he knows who he is. And that works down in New Orleans. It don't work in Cloverdale, some of his stuff. But a lot of his stuff will work in Cloverdale. And, and, and I'm telling you, after knocking on doors a few weeks, one of the greatest areas, I, I, I can tell you one of the greatest areas that Cloverdale faces is poverty, generational poverty. I'm knocking on doors, and, and I, I can't tell you how many doors we knocked on, and, and, and it, it, it's grandma, mom, and the kids all in one household, or the grandma's watching the kids, and the, and the mom is in jail, or the dad is in jail, and I'm telling you, this is multiple, multiple, multiple houses, and just a few short Saturdays, and you're seeing five generations of poverty right there. And every sign, you got the trash cans overflowing with cigarettes, the trash cans overflowing with, with, with pop cans and beer cans, and, and, and then, and then you, you, you look into the house and it's hoarding, and, and, and it, it, it's, they're wearing poverty like I'm wearing this jacket, and it's obvious. And man, the key to breaking poverty is not giving somebody money. You'll give somebody money who's got a poverty spirit. That money's gone and they're still in poverty. 
Okay, the key is to break that cycle of thinking, that pattern of the way they identify themselves, and you have to start with the spirit before you get it in in the flesh. And so what I'm going to do as a man of God, as someone who cares about this community, who doesn't care what uh, I care, but, but it doesn't hurt. I don't allow my feelings to get hurt when people criticize me, is I'm going to bring somebody I know who's got an anointing to break poverty curses. Does that make sense? Now, if you are anti-prosperity, that's fine, but don't be a hypocrite about it. Turn off your air conditioning, get you less than 800 square feet to live in, get you a car that's 20 years old, take off all your jewelry, only shop at the Goodwill, do not go on vacation, and if you do any of those things, do not tell me you are against prosperity. Okay, get you a horse and buggy, but if you're going to enjoy prosperity and then criticize others for being prosperous or being, and what the issue many times is, is not that they're, more, they're prosperous, it's that they're more prosperous than you or they're more prosperous than what your mind can comprehend. Amen. Okay. So does that make sense to you? I hate poverty. I hate it, hate it, hate it. This is, and when the Bible's telling me, and we're going to see this multiple times, multiple times, that one of the products of wisdom is riches and honor. So why do we want to glorify poverty when poverty is under the curse of the law? We are, we're not going to minister and save orphans when we're in poverty. We cannot feed children. We cannot set slaves free. We cannot preach the gospel to Cloverdale if everybody's in poverty. We cannot do it. I, 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 I've never had to do this, never will do this, but I'm never going to call up Duke Energy and say, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right, but we can't pay our bill this month. That don't work. We'll be having church in the dark. Okay. Now, we all have to figure out what God's will is for us. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And you have to figure that out where where God places you and what God's put on your heart and that type of thing. Okay? And and once again, you don't have to agree with somebody on everything, but you can still receive from them. And that's where I'm at with it. Does that make sense? But I just, when I look at the benefit, when I see how wisdom sets itself up scripturally, and I see so many people get mad when someone talks about just a little bit of prosperity, say, or just a little bit of, you know, let's believe God for good health. Well, who do you think you are believing God for good health? Well, hopefully I'm someone who's wise. Because the length of days is added to me when I'm wise. And, and have you ever heard this thing? And it's kind of hard to be a pastor sometimes and get away with saying this. But, you know, I've got enough of a reputation. I can put my toe on the line a little bit. And my wife's sitting back there and not here. So, you know, there's, I can get away with it. But, you know, have you ever heard this saying? And, and, it, and if this offends you, just forgive me in advance. But life is hard. But life is harder when you're stupid. And that's, that's a true statement. That's a true statement. So the quicker we learn wisdom, the easier life gets. Okay. Um, and wisdom is pleasantness. Man, I like pleasantness. Man, haven't we had the most enjoyable fall? Other than we, got, we need a little bit of rain. We need some rain. But, I mean, the weather is, like, perfect. The sun's been shining. The trees are beautiful. I mean, this is like, if you're, if you're a lifetime Hoosier, this is as good as it gets, <laughs> okay? And, and some of you, if you haven't gone, you know, get down to Brown County here in these next few days. Take a drive. We have not gone yet. We need to go. But, I mean, just everywhere, just gorgeous. And when you're wise, you appreciate it even more. It's, life is pleasant. I like, I like pleasantness. Uh, and wisdom is peace. I like peace. 
Don't you like peace? I mean, isn't one of the promises of God peace? Isn't he the prince of peace? He'll give us peace that passes understanding to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Well, may I see it? Peace is one of the byproducts of wisdom. Uh, a tree of life. Well, that, that's good. Man, we're not even halfway done with the list yet. I better start. I got to start going fast. It says your hope will not be cut off. You'll never be hopeless if you're wisdom, if you have wisdom. My goodness, great. You, you, you know, there are people that have, tried, that have thought about killing themselves. In our community, and people you know, people you love, some of them have got to a place of hopelessness because, uh, and, and really got to the place where they didn't want to live anymore. They just couldn't find any reason to live. But when you have wisdom, you're never going to be without hope, without purpose. That's awesome. It says your life is blessed. It says those who have wisdom find life. Now, this is all, the, our 10 people just read all this stuff, and I'm just summarizing for them. It says you obtain favor from the Lord. How many want to be favored by God? I tell you, I, 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 want, to be, I, I want to be God's favorite kid. Uh, you'll find good. Now, right there, you know, can I, uh, let me help somebody else. Have you ever met someone who just criticizes everything? You know, it, that's not wisdom. You know, <laughs> I, I can't remember. There's been a couple of movies that have, that have made fun of this, but you have somebody walk into your house as a guest, and instead of saying, hi, Juanita, how you doing? So nice to see you. They're out looking around and say, oh, your cabinets are crooked. Uh, they use the wrong type of material over here. Has anybody ever had a house guest like that? They come in and uh, just forget about you. We're going to criticize all the construction in your house. Well, that's someone who's looking for the bad. Wisdom finds the good. Okay. You know, I, I was joking, not joking. I was talking about Miss Bernie. You know, spoke death into my life. Man, wisdom finds a way to speak life. Looks for the good in people. Um. Your days will be multiplied. Well, there's two ways to look at that. Number one, I'm going to live longer. But number two, I'm going to get more done in the course of a day. When I'm wise, I, I mean, you know, you, you can go through life and just taking whatever life hands you. You know, I've taken courses on time management. I've taken several courses on how to set your priorities, how, how, to, how, to, how to do your tasks, how, how, to, how to set up a week, how to set up a day. Uh, I've read so many books. One of the latest books I read, a gr one of the best I've read in a long time, called Atomic Habits. Uh, if anybody's looking for a book to read, Atomic Habits. Phenomenal book, how on every day, if you look to make small improvements in every area of your life, uh, over the course of time, it has like a nuclear atomic impact just by making small little discipline changes on a daily basis. But, oh, my God, there's so many, so many books. Uh, uh, Seven Habits of, of Highly Effective People. Uh, the one we, uh, Mark Batterson wrote. Um, I just made all of our staff read it. What was it, Han? You don't remember? You didn't read it. Uh, I have it right here. How, win the day. Thank you. Win the day uh, on just, you know, habits that every day that, that contribute to a lifetime of achievement. Man, you know, you can multiply your day. If you wake up every day and you just take whatever life hands you, the, the, the tail's going to be wagging the dog. But if you get up and you learn how to manage your day and manage your time, and I'll tell you another thing, you, how to learn to use small increments of time, small increments of time add up. You know, these things, we have to be careful these things don't steal your life. Because what, what, what and, and I said, oh, God, I, you know, uh, uh, the youth group, they're getting me in trouble. The youth group just started some stuff on um, TikTok, okay? And I am not a TikToker. I don't, I don't like to make all this stuff. And, and, and I want to, but, so I went and looked at it, and I was like, that's pretty cool. But if you're not, I mean, there's the, once you watch that 15-second video, there's, there's another 15-second video that comes in. And if you're not careful, you can put an hour in that right away. You just lost an hour of your time on stuff you cannot remember that it has no eternal value. It has no value, okay, other than dimming down our attention spans. So, so we, one of the things that just learning to multiply your days is learning how to use small increments of time. What is that? That's wisdom. See, 
wisdom. And, and, and there's so many people, you get up and you have no plan. You just take whatever life gives you, whatever hands you. You don't, you don't even have a priority list, a checklist for the day. My goodness gracious, at the end of the day, you wonder what you did. I, the thing I, I've heard people say this before, and, and, and if it's you, don't get under, convi- under condemnation, but maybe some conviction. I've heard people, oh, I, it was just a great day. I just stayed in my pajamas all day long. Man, that is weak. You just wasted one of the gifts that God gave you a day. Now, we all need to rest. You need some rest. But man, there's a right way to rest and a wrong way to rest. <laughs> so get dressed, yeah. And, and, and I know you all in here don't wear your pajamas to Walmart, but, you know, right, we better move on. I'm having, are you having fun with it? I'm having fun with this. This just, this is what happens when we have wisdom. Your days are multiplied. It says the years of life are added to you. Not days, but years. Man, I want to be, I want to outlive by years. Your years of life will be many. What, 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 what? Your years of life will be what? Many. Means we, we, when we operate in wisdom, we can believe God to be able to get old. I, I, want to, I want to get old, praise God. Amen. Uh, I know some preachers, when they get old, they get face surgery, you know, and Botox and all that. I'm not one of those guys. All right. Have you, like, I, I love Joyce Meyer. We have her conference, that type of thing. But have you, I mean, Joyce has clearly had some work done. I love hearing Joyce preach. She's like, and today we're going to talk about managing your emotions. <laughs> I love Sister Joyce. And Andrew and I have taught, she's, she's like, you know, when, when we get old, do you think I should get Botox? No! I like your lips just how they are, baby. Your steps will not be hindered. My goodness, your steps are not hindered when we have wisdom. Oh my. You will not stumble. Deliver you from evil. You'll walk in goodness. Man, I like that, walking in goodness. Uh, life to your soul. You know, your soul ought to have life in it. Man, man you know, I, I get concerned about Christians who are just so lifeless, you know, and they're sad, and they're always focused on, well, we're just holding on, just keeping on, keeping on. Well, praise God that you're keeping on, but wisdom will bring life to your soul, okay? Okay. Um, grace to your neck. You'll walk safely and not be afraid. Mamas, I know you're some praying mamas. And I, I, I pray this, you know, Sarah has her driver's license as of last week. And uh, man, we're praying. You know, we are praying. But we don't have to pray from a position of fear. You know, I, and it's important, Lord, one of the prayers that we prayed for all of our kids is that they would be anointed by God with wisdom and knowledge and skill and understanding. And if they'll operate in wisdom, then the safety comes, you see. You'll not be afraid. Your sleep will be sweet. Man, how many of y'all ever have a sleep so good that you just wake up and it feels like, man, that felt like honey. That just felt so, so good. You know, if if you're struggling to sleep, if you're ever having that season where you're struggling to sleep, and it happens, but use this as a promise of God. Lord, as I'm praying, I just pray that when I lay down, my sleep is sweet, as the Word of God says. And the other thing is, if you're struggling to sleep, one of the things you want to ask the Lord is, Lord, are you trying to get me up to pray, to talk? Is there something you're trying to tell me? And I don't understand how God works this way, but there are some things about God where he seems to enjoy getting us up and making us pray at times that our flesh does not want to. You know, can, can I just tell you something, uh, uh, something God did to me all the way back in Bible school and does to this day, all right? And this, in my sermon preparation, 
Now, I prepare a message for weeks on end, okay, weeks, and, and I know kind of start thinking about it, writing notes. Matter of fact, uh, I'm trying to do a better job of wisdom of when I have a thought, I write it down, because if you don't write it down, what happens? You forget. So even now, I start carrying, I've started carrying my phone even over to church, and the moment I have a thought, I just get out my phone and write it down so that I don't forget, Okay. But in my sermon preparation, I have begged the Lord, Lord, could you give me the sermon completely by Thursday, by Friday? By Saturday at 2 o'clock would be nice. But you know, as I've done this in February, will be 30 years of preaching every single week on Sundays. 30 years, and less than five times has God ever revealed the message to me before late night, Saturday night, to the fullness. Now, I know what I'm preaching. I may know the, the basic. I will, I will go on Thursday. I will sit down in my office. Okay, I'm going to write my message. This is time. I'll even go somewhere and get a nice cup of coffee, an aesthetic place, and surely God is going to speak to me here. You know, surely this will be the place, and I'll just... Three hours later, come on, God, come on, God, come on, God. I've done this 30 years, Ron, and for whatever reason, well, I know exactly, he told me one time, he said, one of my fastings in life will be to fast sleep on Saturday nights, that I am not to sleep long on Saturday nights, and I will go to bed extremely late and get up extremely early. I'll go to bed 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock. I've gotten a little earlier, 12, 31, and I'm up by 6. And that's just how God speaks to me. And I wish it was different. I've asked him, and, and now that I do like to go to bed a little earlier. I used to be a late night guy. and You know, just nothing to stay up till 1 a.m. And up by 6 or 7 for the next day or 8. But anymore, I like to go to bed before midnight. I've asked, Lord, can you give me some grace? He's cruel. <laughs> this is when we lie down, our sleep will be sweet. The Lord will be your confidence. When we have wisdom, another way to look at that is when we have wisdom, we don't put confidence in ourselves. He will keep your foot from being caught. Oh, my goodness. You know, I was joking about the Nigerian princes. But do you know how many opportunities we have on a regular basis to be scammed? I, I mean, I tell you what, these hackers have gotten really good. They've hacked into our church a couple times, and, and they've gotten into my email system. And um, they have emailed Megan from my email on a couple times saying, I need you to get $10,000 out and transfer it over here right away. And Megan has been on the way to the bank and called me and said, now, what account do you want that out of? And I'm saying, what, what are you talking about, Megan? Uh, and she, she's like, well, you just, you just said we want $10,000. Megan, I did not send you that email. And we realized we got hacked, you know. These people are good. And there are people trying to scam you and hack you. And, of course, our, Scott and the team went to town and made it so that can't happen again. But, but dear Lord Jesus but the Bible says it'll keep our feet from being caught, keep us from being scammed and hacked. Wisdom, it will build your house. Wisdom will establish your house. Wisdom will fill your rooms with pleasant and precious riches. Wisdom will cause you to inherit wealth and your treasuries be full. Now we read all that big mouthful I just gave you. Those people read that over those 10 different uh, sections of the book of Proverbs. That's what wisdom does. So when the Bible says, and, and I'm out of time, I got to be done 15 minutes ago, and, and that's just part one, of, of, and we were, that's page three, and I had 11 tonight, just, just on, on those notes. And, and so we're going to come back and hit this again, because I mean, just, just look at the power of wisdom. And we didn't even get into, uh, we'll, we'll pick this up next week. What happens when we reject wisdom? 
But that's why the Bible says, seek her. Her proceeds are better than, than gold and silver. So let me close with saying this. Wisdom will cost you something. It'll cost you your time. It'll cost you effort. It does cost you, okay? It costs time to read a book. Do you know how many people that have came to me, Pastor, I have a problem. Okay, and they tell me the problem. Well, I know exactly the solution to your problem. I mean, you're saying your problem is two plus two, and I've got an answer, four. And all you have to do to get to four is, there's a book right here that deals exactly with what you're going through. I mean exactly. And do you know 90% of the time what the people say? I don't like to read. And Pastor Matt is just to the point, I don't care. Read the book or don't come back to me. Because what happens, people want to go do the repeat the same thing. Pastor, 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 I got a problem. Well, isn't it the same problem we had six months ago? Yeah. Well, did you read the book I told you six months ago? I was too busy. All right. You know, let's just put our head in the vice and... Man, get wisdom. Young people, you're going to make, you know, a generation ago, we told people they would make more than $1 million in their working lifetime, and yet by the time they would be 65, most of them could not write a check for $200. Those numbers are much bigger now. You're entering the job force. By the time you're 60, you're going to have made over 2 to $3 million if you have an average job. 2 to $3 million is going to go through your hands over the next 35 to 40 years. Easy. And if you would take some time, and I know Steve has talked to you, but man, books like The Millionaire Next Door, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and learn to get some discipline and stop buying those $4 energy drinks three times a day. Stop, you know, don't be going to Starbucks and take that money and invest it. By the time you're our age, you're going to be wealthy. You're going to be bling, you know. It's good. That's the word for my generation. Blank. Okay. Andrew and I found out the other day that the word digs is not socially acceptable anymore either. You know, anyway, never mind. We got to go. That's how I end almost all my messages. We got to go. It's not I'm done. It's we got to go. And we got to go. And some of you are like, man, pastor, I've got to go. So we got to go. I hope you understand as I'm preaching this and sharing this, the passion that I have for it. It's because I see the reality of this. All right, let's let you go. Father, bless these people. Bless our child care workers tonight, especially the ones with babies and little kids. But Lord, help us to apply the principles of wisdom in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right.